Ni Hao from the Volvo Ocean Race in China and welcome to our coverage of the Sanya Haitang Bay in Port Race. The boats are about to depart and the good news is the wind is pumping. Alongside me, former world champion sailor Peter Lester and Peter, we are in for a cracking day. Certainly Martin, the team's going down to the boats. Conditions absolutely perfect. We have uh, Northeaster, it looks like it's going to be well up uh, 18, 20 in the mid 20s Martin. Uh, upwind start and, and I think we're in through a, a classic race with lots of pace. Mike Sanderson leads the team Sanya, the local team down uh, the dock. Immediately behind Cameron Dunn. Big moment for Mike. A here. huge moment, a huge moment for Mike Sanderson. He's a former Volvo Ocean Race winner, also won the Whitbread and He's bought Sanya here, and uh, uh, lucky in some ways that the boat is slightly off the pace, but what isn't off the pace is the way that they've got this amazing reputation in China now, and the whole idea of bringing the, the race to Sanya, having a team there, was that it would develop the area. It's worked here, and it also worked for these guys. This is, um, this is Ian Walker, who's the skipper, of Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing, and with him is Adil Khalid, who is the first United Arab Emirates sailor to compete in the Volvo Ocean Race. And they won, they've won two of these import races. They won in some style in Abu Dhabi, and they'll be trying to get a repeat here now. And that's the fleet that we're looking at. Here comes uh, the Abu Dhabi team. And uh, Pete, I mean, you worked in that part of the world in Abu Dhabi and you know what it meant to have uh, the race there and the success that they enjoyed in their import race there, particularly for, for Adil Khalid. Well, Adil Khalid, of course, he went to the Olympics in the laser class and um, he now has stepped up and he's become the face, really, of certainly the Volvo Ocean Race in Abu Dhabi good team of sailors and a bit of a, a tough beginning of the Volvo Ocean Race for Abu Dhabi Racing, losing their mast, breaking their mast in the first leg out of Alicante and really from there they've uh, chipped away Martin, they've won a couple of inshore races and they'll be one of the teams to watch today. As indeed is this team here, the, the, uh, the good luck symbol there from Kenny Reed, skipper of Puma Ocean Racing, powered by Berg. And they too have had mixed fortunes. They lost their rig in the, uh, in the first leg, which was obviously a, a, a massive blow. And they, they've bounced back, and I think very much that, that they've still... We've yet to see the best of them, because we know the potential's enormous. A lot of potential. Second in the last Volvo Ocean Race, uh, Puma. Kenny Reed, skipper twice in the America's Cup. Vastly experienced, loves the inshore phase of the Volvo Ocean Race. Well, he's an intense, and an absolute yeah. character too. He's, he's a character and he's an intense competitor, there's no doubt about that. And he certainly relates very well to the, to the yachting public. I mean, Volvo, the Volvo Ocean Race is bringing by Kemi de Sanya. <laughs> there he is, working the crowd, he knows how to do it. And uh, I mean, the, the the Volvo Ocean Race has come to Sanya, spreading yachting further and further into new markets around the world. It's been an enormous success here. I mean, this marina that they're walking around now is, is a, obviously is a direct result being built here of the Volvo Ocean Race coming here. We've been here a few days now, Peter, and this the, I've been watching the way that the, uh, the marina has filled up, and the crowds are extraordinary. Well, it's a big turnout here this morning for the, um, you know, just for the dock out as Kenny Reid leads his team down on board. Humor. We can There's see the fleet them. sitting there, the, the big Volvo Ocean Race headquarters that moves from port to port along with the, the whole of the Volvo Ocean Race village and it's really proved to be a draw card here. Crowds uh, every day, queues for people trying to get into all the different attractions in the race village and of course the key attraction today, the um, Sanya Haitang Bay in port race and the crews competing in it. This is Frank Camas leading Group Armour down uh, along the dock. And you can see the, the scale of everything here. I mean, it's just uh, well, looking out across the bay where the racing is going to be taking place uh, in, in the matter of a couple of hours. And we're going to watch the Group Armour team uh, walk the, the gauntlet of the crowd. Here they are now. Group Armour coming down onto the dock. 
Frank Kamar, second in the league from second league or the third league from Abu Dhabi to Sanya. This team seemed to be stepping it up. They're getting better and better. They certainly look very competitive. Fast boats, loves the fresher conditions. Well, we watched them racing yesterday in the import, right in the uh, Pro-Am race here yesterday, uh, where all the guests on board got a real thrill. Uh, that's going to be repeated today for the cruise because it is uh, very breezy. And yesterday we saw these boats absolutely light up, in particular Group Armour. They were flying around the course and uh, they're, they're just growing in confidence. They're learning their boat, they're getting it to go quicker and quicker. And in Frank Camas, we've just got uh, one of the most experienced offshore racers, round the world racers of all time, more in multi hulls and monos. But uh, he's really embracing this challenge, and they're getting a huge following back in France, uh, where the French really do embrace their offshore sailors. Now to Camper. Well, this is a very interesting scenario here. The the Camper boys, uh, they feel themselves they've not quite hit the straps. They've been managing podium positions. They're currently lying second overall behind Telefonica. And what they want to do is get on the top of that podium, not just uh, just a place. And this is Chris Nicholson, the skipper, uh, leading the way. And they've had a couple of coaches have come up, America's kept coaches from uh, Emirates Team New Zealand, to try and sharpen them up for the import race. And we're about to see if it has worked. And they really do need this, um, you know, a first place finish. We watched them win the pro am race yesterday, and they need to they need to do that uh, if they're going to be able to claw anything back on Telefonica, who are reigning so supreme. So Kemper with Emirates Team New Zealand, Chris Nicholson leads his team down. Andrew McLean on his right, Robert Salthouse immediately behind. They have been the epitome of consistency so far in the Volvo Ocean Race, but um, they're at a stage now they need a couple of podiums or, or winning positions. There's the Hamish man, Hooper. Hamish hey? Hooper, he brings you all the pictures off the boats uh, when they're out there sailing, and he's actually got a camera in his hand as he's strolling along here now. Oh, it's an interesting thing, this, uh, the analogy has been made for rugby followers that uh, Emirates Team New Zealand and Camper, rather like the All Blacks, they're expected to win everything, and when they don't, well, things turn a little bit dark, and they'll be hoping to find some light today here on the uh, Sanya Haitang Bay import race. Well, the kings the, of this whole race at the moment, that's Ike Martinez leading his team Telefonica down. I mean, they've just been sailing extraordinarily well in, in, in every respect. Certainly have. They have been the, the form horse, Ika Martinez, wonderful sailor, two gold medals at the Olympics, and uh, the yachting pedigree, first class Spanish sailor, very famous, along with his crew. There's Jordi Calafat, the other gold medalist on that team. But, Martin, you've got to say, uh, Telefonica... In well, terms they're, setting of the, the, they're setting the benchmark, aren't they? The, I mean, the, they're the benchmark boat. And the, the, it's, not just, it's not just the way they're sailing the boat, but their decision-making has been so good. I mean, Andrew Cape, the, the navigator, well, he deserves a few plaudits. Yeah, Andrew Cape, Capey, the navigator on board, hasn't put a foot wrong in the offshore races. And really, uh, coupled with a very fast boat, they have chalked up three phenomenal wins in the offshore. Well, I mean, it's quite funny because in the first leg, there was an awful lot going on behind them. We saw, you know, we had uh, two boats dismasted and, uh, and we had a third boat having to delaminate with, San with Team Sanya and, you know, problems with their hull. But the, the, uh, and in the meantime, these guys just kept making all the right decisions and almost by... It was almost stealth-like the way that they just got in the front, stayed there, no problems, no drama, and they were just making all the right decisions, and they were, if you like, out of the news because they were doing everything right. Certainly, they certainly have. They haven't put a foot, foot, foot wrong in the, the leg from Abu Dhabi to Senya. They had a problem in the, um, the start of the leg out of 
the Maldives and uh, with a rip sail, they were behind the fleet, but over that period of days, Martin, they just clawed their way back and then they ended up winning the leg into Sanya. I thought that was a phenomenal effort by Ike Martinez and his Telefonica team. OK, now this is the absolute star here in Sanya. That's uh, Teng Jang He, who is one of the grinders, and he is an astonishing story. Tiger is his nickname, the first Chinese sailor on the Volvo Ocean Race. And this is what they're going to be sailing towards tomorrow. This is a Kapahaka, Kapahaka group from New Zealand, uh, giving a little bit of uh, Maori culture, the uh, indigenous people of New Zealand. And that'll be uh, a, a very heartwarming experience for all the Kiwis on board that boat uh, to hear all that the familiar noise and sights of, um, of a Kapahaka group, and we'll be seeing a lot more of that over the weekend as Sanya hands over the hosting rights from um, Sanya over to Auckland, New Zealand, the city of sales. But before that, of course, this is Mike Sanderson, skipper of Sanya, and we'll be talking to him later as well about what it's been like here having uh, the, the, you know, having the boat here in his home port and having the race here. But, uh, I mean, he too will have, uh, as a New Zealander, he will have recognised the sights and sounds of the, the Kapahaka group that we've just had. He's talking there to the race director, Jack Lloyd, who um, is, is possibly facing a fairly tough decision later on today because while the breeze is pumping, as you can see from the flags in the back of that shot, the other uh, absolutely being stretched out on their halyards, and Jack Lloyd here and the rest of the Volvo race management have got to consider a pretty nasty weather pattern that's uh, brewing offshore from here in Sanya. And uh, it's, it's going to be pretty brutal out there, whatever happens, because the conditions, Pete, you've been having a chat with one of the meteorologists, and it's uh, not a happy scene out there. Well, it's certainly uh, pretty rugged. There's um, essentially a low pressure and a high pressure system, and in between there's the compression. There's plenty of wind, 25 to 30 knots over, you know, a, a stretch of ocean really from the top of the Philippines right down, 600 mile stretch. So that means that there's a big sea state running, Martin, and I think it's probably the issue is sea state more than actually wind speed. But um, I understand there's um, there's plenty of meetings going on about decisions to be made um, in terms of what will happen at the start of the leg down to Auckland. But for us today, for this import race, we couldn't ask for better conditions, beautiful conditions, 18 to 25 knots. And uh, we're in for an exciting race with these Volvo 70s. Well, the great thing is for all these people who are here, this race is going to start right just off the marina and they're going to be able to see everything unfold in front of them. And it's some spectacle. I mean, the, the Pro-Am race in these conditions that we enjoyed, the three races yesterday, well, I mean, I don't think... I think it's the, mo the most dynamic we've seen these boats in inshore yesterday. Flat sea, well, upwards of 20 knots of, uh, of, of wind, mid-20s boat speed. I mean, some of the shots were just, just dramatic. And these boats will be a handful around yep. the course. They are, they are a handful because um, they're short-handed. There's only 11... 11 crew, so 10 doing the mechanical function. There's the skipper of Abu Dhabi Racing, Ian Walker. He's just contemplating what's ahead for the <laughs> afternoon. He's got his yeah. game face on there a little bit, hasn't he? He's a, he's a tough competitor. We watched him yesterday. I mean, it was meant to be a pro-am race, you know, a little bit of a gentle sail around it. It's never like that. They're all far too competitive to not get stuck into it. But with the short-handed nature of the boats, um, sailing these boats round a short track, there's, we're in for um, probably, it looks like seven markers they've got to go round. So that means the crews will be just uh, head down, um, doing the manoeuvres, packing sails. Of course, they are not really set up for round the boys racing these boats, so it puts a, a premium on crew work. Oh, Frank Camas is looking pretty relaxed about it all there, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's... Uh, you, know, the, you know how many times has he been around the world? Lots, is, uh, is, is the answer. He's just 37 
that was 39 years old, and this is uh, actually his first Volvo, but uh, I mean, he set records for getting around the world, one of which was beaten just uh, very recently by Bank Populaire. And it's a thought, isn't it, now that, you know, when you start knocking weeks off a round the world trip, it says a lot about the new technology and what these boats, uh, what these boats and the, the multis are, are all about. And these are, of course, the world's quickest ocean racing monohulls. They're, they've got all the, the, there's the fleet, we're looking right down the fleet there now. And that, yeah, this is absolutely the cream of offshore ocean, ocean racing in the world at the moment, the boats and the sailors. And there's no doubt, and I think Mike Sanderson, very, very experienced here. That's passing the nipper back to his wife, Emma, herself uh, a round-the-world sailor. And they will tell you categorically, any of the sailors, that this is the toughest race that this has ever been. In terms of what the sailors have to endure, this is the toughest race ever. I have no doubt. And Martin, you and I were lucky enough to go down on board um, camper yesterday. And uh, the conditions down below are minimal <laughs> at best in terms of living conditions. Well, I think we, we, we had, uh, we're having a chat with various people about what the conditions are like, and I can tell you that Spartan would be uh, luxurious. luxurious <laughs> and um, not insignificantly, they're, they're beginning to develop a certain um, aroma, you might say, <laughs> down below uh, that smacks of diesel, sweat, bodies, freeze dried food, and hard work as much as anything else. And, I mean, it's, the boats are completely stripped out and everything is hard, everything is tough. Uh, because not only are they sailing the boat, but they're perpetually shifting all the gear around now. Here's the Kappa Haka group. And that's uh, the tattoo on this young warrior's face. It's called a moko. And the little uh, flax, those little white balls that the girls have got, they're called poise. And uh, I don't know if they're going to fire up and, and show us a bit of, uh, bit of their craftsmanship. This is Sanya, and it's population around about half a million. As I say before, the reason that they bought the Volvo Ocean Race here is to help this develop. It's known as the Hawaii of the Orient. This is the new marina here that we're looking out across now. And it's the, at the sort of the end of Hainan Island, the southernmost point of Hainan Island, which is southwest China, really, about an hour flying southwest of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, we came in through Guangzhou, and this is Yaman Tiger. Extraordinary that he has become the sailing superstar of China. Started off from very, very, uh, very, very poor background. He was. Uh, Really, a very, very poor childhood, but up in the northeast of China. But he has gone into construction, become a multi-millionaire, used to race cars, but then got a real passion for ocean racing. And it, he got bitten by the bug, and now he's got superstar status uh, sailing here with Team Sanya. And of course, it's been an absolute thrill for him to be back here. And in front of his in front of his home crowd, and I think this you know we've seen this as I said with Abu Dhabi and now with Sanya Peter that this the 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 race brings this development. Yes, it does, and uh, again new marina and the, the facilities here are lovely. The accommodations being first class, and uh, best of all the sailing conditions out here on the bay are, are, are just first class. Plenty of breeze. We're going to experience that later in the day, and you've got to. You've got to believe um, it's, it's opening the sport up uh, to, to very nicely in Asia for another top top class venue. Well, yesterday when you were watching this, you were looking at it with a, a race organizer's eye and thinking, well, you could bring any kind of regatta here. Team Sanya leaves the dock, heading out for the Sanya Hai Tang Bay in port race here in China. And uh, a rousing farewell, a rousing send off. Uh, for the local boat. Pictures galore being snapped. And 
on the left here is where we're broadcasting from. That's the Volvo Tower on the left, and we're on the coming to you from the fifth and sixth floors. This is the the Volvo Ocean Race Village with all its attractions, and here is the fleet with Sanya heading out of the marina, out onto the racetrack, and uh, just uh, under two hours now to the start. They'll go out, limber up, get their sails up and down, choose their sail combinations, settle nerves, and and just uh, really get sorted for the race. Ian Walker lead, leading out next on Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing. Adil Khalid, young United Arab Emirates crewman. There he is. Give him a shot, and they're off they go. <laughs> Well, a very enthusiastic, I think it's the most enthusiastic crowd we've seen since yes, the race so started in Spain. Making plenty of noise and Hannah White emceeing, getting the crowd racked up as Abu Dhabi Racing heads out through the marina onto the bay. Certainly, I think the crowd, Martin, are intrigued to see this activity i guess they're not accustomed to seeing grand prix racing or volvo ocean racing but this part of the world is just developing so quickly and um local oh, yeah. boat local boat in the regatta you've got to believe that uh, we'll, we'll see more boats entered from asia in the volvo ocean race well if you look around here as where you know, there's the, the there's the village the marina is just first class and there's you see a lifting out facility and then you know, the cranes being brought in for these boats which will have been up on the up on the hard standing there kenny reed getting ready man in the bottom left hand uh, with the glasses on and the puma hat that's Kimo worthington who is the shore manager for the puma team and uh, he has to mastermind uh, everything that goes on to keep the boat uh, up and running and he had a really hard task, of course, when they lost the rig and ended up uh, having to motor into Tristan de Cunha, uh, up the island in the Atlantic, and then pick up his ship. Kenny Reid. He doesn't like being reminded of this, but at 50, he's the oldest man in the race by two days from Tony Ray, who is on the camper boat. Kenny Reid, huge pedigree, world championships uh, inshore and offshore, America's Cup stuff, and now, of course, uh, the Volvo Ocean Race. But this one, not quite panning out how he'd hoped after having come second in the last edition. He'd got a, a better campaign this time round and had learned all that knowledge, but then losing that rig was just the most colossal setback. But they'll fight back, and we are, of course, we're not even halfway through this race yet. There's a long, long way to go. Long way to go, and uh, this could be a defining leg with the weather pattern that we're seeing out just off the coast here from Hanan Island. Uh, I think tomorrow could be a very interesting day, but we're in for a... points on the board. There's points. These, these races count, Martin. The winner will get five points today. There's Frank Kamas taking a group armor out. So this is the real deal. As Got some guests on the on, on the back of the boat for this race. Um, uh, they'll be they are in for a treat, there's no doubt about that. Watch the boats go out. Look at the battle flags, the way that they're being stretched out of the front. It really is blurry out there. And we, we've made the point before that the you know, there's just not a lot of people on these on, a, on these boats for a boat to this size and the amount of work they have to do. Here we go. This is the Kawahaka group from New Zealand. Hairi Mai saying farewell. A salute. New Zealand has a strong Maori culture and of course the teams are going to experience that Martin when they come down to Auckland in through the Haraki Gulf into the Waitemata Harbour, Harbour and I'm sure as they approach Auckland there'll be more of Kapahaka and Maori culture 
very strong cultural heritage, wonderful singers. I love the singing of the, the Maori. So camp is on the way, and this is a huge day for these guys. Has the has it worked to bring the coaches in? Uh, Rod Davis was one of them. He's an Olympic silver medalist and long-time America's Cup sailor and a coach, sailing coach to Emirates Team New Zealand. I wonder what wisdom he's imparted, along with uh, his sidekick, who does a lot of the video work, Joey Allen, who was a legendary bowman in uh, round-the-world racing and America's Cup racing. I think and, they might have uh, worked a little character. bit on, on detail, Martin. I read a piece this morning that from Rod, just not changing a lot, just attention to detail, pre-start. Communication. Communication. And uh, Team New Zealand really are a team, a well-oiled machine, certainly in terms of the America's Cup campaigns. And uh, I think Rod Davis and Joey Allen being up here would be a very positive for the, the team. Rod Davis pretty well looks after the afterguard. And then we've got Joey Allen who looks after the mechanical or the the um, you know the mechanical functions, bowman, changing sails. But a great combination of coaching. And also well, saw Terry Pippinay there as well. And Thierry Thierry, Pippinay, yeah. he would have been doing the same sort of job for Group Armour, but Group he was Armour. walking alongside with Frank Camas on so the parade. Yeah. I think uh, you know the, the ante is up a little bit with teams bringing in these specialist experts to help out just looking for those little finite gains. And uh, the boats are so evenly matched in terms of speed that... Well, this is the the boat to lead. You can see the leg winner and overall leader battle flags on the front of Telefonica. They've had a few issues this week. They didn't take part in the Pro-Am races because they'd uh, replaced their rig and they were trying to tune it. There's some uh, un as yet unidentified problem with the rig that they had in, so they've swapped it over to give them some more peace of mind and seem to be happy now with how that uh, has all worked out for them. And it's this is, you know, like Camper trying to step it up. This is what Telefonica want to do here. The Spanish boat uh, keen to improve its record in the import races. And certainly the, well, actually all the boats uh, are overflowing with sailors of astonishing pedigree at every form of... Uh, of our sport and on their day any of them can win here so as the fleets leave we could say that I think we've got about um, we'll be back on the air in about an hour and a half at 13.45 hours 1.45 local time here in Sanya for the Sanya Haitang Bay in port race and the teams now will go out they'll get their game faces on get their sails up tuned up and ready to race so we look forward to welcoming you back to the coverage of the volvo ocean race the sanya high tang bay in port race here in sanya we'll be back on air at 145.